Hey, Coach Tess here, your holistic wellness coach. And what I want to come and talk to you about today is um, just a foundation, a foundation of what everybody kind of needs to start working toward their highest potential of optimal health and wellness, both physically and emotionally. And, you know, optimal health and wellness looks different for everyone. And what might work for some people doesn't always work for others because every body is different, right? Every body and everyone's circumstances vary. But what holds true for everyone are these three basic pillars, okay, that are essential for experiencing your best health, um, both physically and emotionally. So these three pillars are diet and exercise. I count them as one. Stress management, quite a biggie. And um, sleep, okay? So your lifestyle along with your specific physiology, you know, this all plays a significant role in your health and wellness. So I'm curious, which areas are you lacking in? Um, let's dive a little deeper and explore them more. So the first one, diet and exercise. Um, let's just hit diet really quick. You know, it's no secret that good nutrition is at the foundation of good health, right? But sometimes we may think we're getting good nutrition, um, you know, but we may actually be consuming foods and nutrients that are not serving our bodies well. Um, even if we think we're putting good stuff in it. Um, for example, when we hit, when we eat diets really high in, in hard to, um, high in processed foods, right? Such and sugars also, um, we're actually using up valuable nutrients because your body is working so hard to like to digest, you know, working hard to process that these, these specific foods. So in other words, even the good nutrients that you may be, you know, taking in and ingesting, they're being used up by other food that you're ingesting. And I like to call these type of foods anti-nutrients. Um, and a diet that's high in these anti-nutrient foods really causes us to have like uh, subclinical values and really important vitamins and minerals um, which, you know, will have a long-term effect on not only your physical, but your emotional health. So, um, you know, we also need to look at the long-term effects that some diets have on our, um, like our body systems in general, you know, starting in our digestive tract and then branching out into other systems. And this might include foods that, you know, you might be sensitive to or have, um, you know, or, or that are causing an inflammatory response in our bodies. And, you know, it could also be, you know, foods like, like diet foods, like, uh, low fat, no fat, sugar free, because when we take these things out of our food, we're actually replacing it. You know, manufacturers are replacing it with harmful chemicals instead, you know, and then we have these highly processed foods and then diets high in GMOs. Um, the use of highly refined oils, you know, these have an impact. Foods with high doses of pesticides, that's a biggie. And then diets high in refined sugar and white flour, you know, huge. So these are all having an impact on your overall physical and emotional health. And this is where, you know, really learning to read your labels and knowing what you're looking for comes in handy. So the bottom line for diet is to really eat a diet, you know, with more whole foods, you know, foods that are, are closer, the closest as possible to their natural, um, you know, where, where they're naturally coming from, you know, their, their natural form as possible with a nice balance, you know, of protein and healthy fats and fiber. Very important. So let's move on to the exercise portion of pillar number two, which is exercise. And I know this word is sometimes um, not uh, people's favorite. So, you know, I like to call it movement and because it just sounds less um, cringy to some. So we don't have to have a militant workout every day, which is why, you know, I kind of want to bring this up. And we know that exercise is important, right? But, and, and let's just take a moment to review why exercise is so important, okay? Decrease cortisol level. All right. Blood sugar balancing, 
increasing endorphins and serotonin levels, those feel good hormones in your body. So really good for our emotional well-being. better sleep, more energy, decreased risks of chronic illnesses, such as, you know, heart disease, diabetes, anxiety, and depression, autoimmune diseases, cancer, and even obesity. Hormone regulation. You know, we want to keep our hormones regulated. It's very important in both men and women. It boosts your metabolism. It strengthens your immune system. And the list goes on and on and on. But again, exercise doesn't have to be extreme to reap some rewards, okay? What's important here is that you choose movement that you find pleasurable, right? Because this is going to help you integrate it into your lifestyle, and it's also going to help you to keep doing it, okay, to sustain this habit. So, you know, we're likely not going to stick to a habit when it's not something that we find pleasure in doing, all right? So getting regular movement is a really important part of your health and your mood. It helps balance, you know, your blood sugar and it oxygenates your blood and your brain. And all these are very essential for your overall health and wellness. All right. Pillar number two, stress. Let's talk about stress. We all have it, and it's impossible not to have any, right? The question really is, how are you managing your stress? And this is really where it starts to affect your physical and your emotional health. So to truly understand it, let's just take a look at what happens in our bodies when we're under a stress response, okay? So, you know, our bodies are designed to react to stress in a, a fight, flight, or freeze um, type of response to danger, typically. You know, that's where it all started. That's, you know, how we were created. And this served us really well in times where humans needed to react quickly to dangers, such as running from that lion, right, or other predators. So the blood rushes away from your vital organs in the center of your body and it moves into your arms and legs so you can get the heck out of Dodge and seek safety. So this shift in blood flow and influx of, of cortisol on a chronic basis will start to show up with physical symptoms. Now cortisol, you may have heard um, referred to as the stress hormone, and this is 100% true, but what we may not realize is that an overabundance of this hormone will cause all sorts of commotion in our bodies. So, you know, it really slows everything down to the slowest of crawls. Now, let us note that cortisol is very important, okay? And it's, it's very much necessary as it plays an important role in our body's mechanisms, okay? We actually have a cortisol cycle just like we have a sleep and wake cycle. Your circadian rhythm is what your sleep-wake cycle is called. So the problem that most people run into is the chronic stress that most of us are experiencing in modern times. So this causes an overload in cortisol production, and that's when things go haywire. Now, here's some ill effects of increased cortisol levels, okay? So we get increased blood pressure chronically. We get increased belly fat, impaired immunity. Uh, high risk for heart disease, high risk for diabetes. We get impaired cognitive performance and ability, um, decreased bone density, decreased muscle tissue, thyroid impairment, sleep disturbances. I mean, the list goes on and on. And so when we talk about stress, there's acute and there's chronic. And acute stress would be, you know, that immediate response to something. Now, let me remind you that we have like a second or 30 seconds sometimes to choose the way that we are going to react to something, right? And so it, that's really key. You know, if you're reactive to every little thing that's happening all day long, all of the time, you know, you're putting yourself in a stress response all of the time. You know, and some stress could be short-lived. You know, we, we've got to like you know, run out of traffic if there's a car coming at us, right? And and that's what we really need it for. Um, but there are healthy ways to deal with life circumstances and experiences. And then there are unhealthy ways to deal with our stress. And this is when, you know, stress leads to a problem if you're, you know, under an acute issue, but then you go and you, you deal with it in an unhealthy way, like numbing yourself, you know, alcohol, smoking, binge eating, 
you know, withdrawing from others or any other numbing mechanism that we use to escape. All right. And so chronic stress, this is when we're undergoing long term constant stress due to maybe past experience or trauma that we're holding on to and we may not even realize it you know but we're holding on to it and it's causing a stress response within the body because we are carrying it um, you may be in a dysfunctional or abusive relationship you may be in a high uh, stress profession um, maybe going through a divorce or you've lost a loved one you know all of these things are cause a, a chronic stress response and having this response continuously over a period of time can lead to some serious health problems um, due to that constant cortisol release so you know managing your stress is key all right pillar number three is sleep now did you rest well last night and i know this is this is a biggie for people and it's an area that many of us have trouble with so we really need adequate sleep for our body to detoxify and replenish and regenerate our cells and our neurons. You know, we can't be in optimal health without these vital processes and sleep is very important in order for this to happen. Now we talked about how stress and cortisol can affect your health and wellness, but when you're sleep deprived, your cortisol level actually rises and this will mimic the stress response in your body. And, and then, you know, across your systems as a whole. So, you know, I, I mentioned the circadian rhythm and the sleep-wake cycle. Well, cortisol has a rhythm too. So typically when you rise in the morning, your um, cortisol level is rising as well. And it continues to rise throughout the morning until it hits its peak in the afternoon. And then this is also when your digestive abilities, by the way, are at their peak and why so many cultures, you know, have their largest meals at this time. This is why. Now, during the afternoon, our cortisol level starts to dip naturally. And along with this, you know, our energy dips as well. And you may find yourself in that, you know, three o'clock slump, right? And then, you know, depending on what we've eating, eaten throughout the day, it becomes more drastic right? Because then we get this, this blood sugar drop too. Um, because insulin and cortisol are very closely related, but that's for another video. Um, but this is where many of us find ourselves maybe reaching for like that, that latte or that, that coffee in the afternoon, or maybe something sweet to keep you going. Right. And then this causes all sorts of, of other issues. And so in the evening, we have a slight rise again, right? So maybe five o'clock or so you get your second wind, right? And then we'll start to dip. We'll start to dip after that because we're going to be now preparing for rest. We're preparing for sleep. And this is very important and because our body detoxes during this time of rest. And this is the time that we're meant to rest and digest. And so when we eat late or we get to bed really late, we miss the mark for getting to sleep when our cortisol levels are at their lowest. And so, you know, if this happens and you miss your mark, you may have trouble getting to sleep or you may be waking up around that 3 a.m. mark, right? Because your cortisol level is now dipping up. And if you're eating late at night, it, you know, your blood sugar is dipping down, which is causing your cortisol level to, to dip up, up or go up. So no bueno. Our cortisol will be at its lowest somewhere around 10 p.m. Of course, this will vary for each individual, but this is the time when you should ideally get to, sh to sleep. And this is crucial because your natural cortisol levels will start to rise throughout the night slowly. So, you know, when you wait too long, then they'll be too high for you to fall asleep and get that quality rest. And experts recommend that adults should be getting between seven and nine hours of sleep per night. You know, like food, this really depends on the individual and finding what works best for you. But if you're not getting adequate rest, you may need to, you know, start looking at your bedtime routine. And this may seem insignificant. However, our bodies thrive on routine. Our brains love routine. You know, it goes into auto mode. So when we have a good solid routine in place, you can train your brain to know when it's time to relax and wind down. Um, you know, this might include definitely turning off electronic devices, you know, you know, TVs an hour before sleep, you know, maybe taking a hot shower, 
grab your journal. I totally recommend that. And you're brain dumping. You're putting things down on paper, getting it out of your head, getting that overthinking um, kind of out of there. Um, meditating is a beautiful thing to do before bed, listening to relaxing music. So I think it's important, though, to darken your space um, and really create kind of a retreat for yourself for bedtime. You know, a nice, cozy space without a lot of clutter and that kind of stuff. Now, lifestyle looks different for everyone, but it encompasses all areas of life. And this is really what holistic health is. It's taking, because everything touches everything, right? It's looking at the whole person. But these three components are at the heart of building a, a very solid foundation to experiencing your highest level of both physical and emotional health. So if you wanna talk more about how to, you know, start reaching your highest potential in your emotional and physical health, please let me know. I'd be happy to chat with you. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me today.